Hello, welcome to part two of our integrative course on bodywork. Uh, my name is Randy Cummins with Black Swan Bodywork and I'm here with Lucy. And in part one, uh, we uh, were looking at, uh, in general, lower back and hip pain. And we did some nice integrative uh, techniques applied after we added some movement. We did a lot of stretching assessment. And then we were looking at the common acupressure points that can be utilized uh, in a situation like this of lower back pain and hip pain. So uh, in this second part of our class, uh, we're going to continue with that and build on uh, those particular techniques and add a little bit more uh, assessment and uh, integrative work. And in uh, working uh, with Lucy here, she's been uh, face down um, so that we could go through the first part and I worked her right side, her lower back and hip and some of her hamstrings. So um, before we go into uh, repeating and then um, adding on to some of the techniques uh, for uh, Lucy's left side, uh, I would like her to get up a little bit and stretch. So in doing so, I like her to push into what's commonly called child's pose where she pushes and has her head here. So you can see this nice extension that's happening in her lower back. So again, mentioning uh, in yoga they call child's pose, but this is a lovely way of stretching the back and also highly recommend this for people with tight back backs because it really adds a sense of length. And if you're working with someone, uh, you can create a little bit more length in their position by simply placing the palms of your hands on her lower back and sacrum and just leaning in and pushing down. Okay. And then in have, assisting her and having her come up out of child's pose. So just easy come up. So she gets acclimated uh, to being in this position. Everything good, yeah? yeah. And then I'm just going to have her, uh, in a minute, I'd just like her to uh, take a time to feel. You know, in integrative work, you really have to look at it in stages. You know, it's like uh, the listening of what's going on, the looking at the body to see if you get any particular clues on uh, what areas are tight. And then the, taking the different techniques and seeing what's applicable to the person you're working on. You know, it's not just some rote behavior. Integrative work is, again, like I mentioned before, is something that keeps you more present. You're selecting things that are hopefully the most beneficial for the person that you're working on. So I just like uh, Lucy to feel some nice uh, uprightness here a little bit because when you come up in an upright position, your back then, it goes more into its role of support and it's feeling uh, your body weight coming through the vertical uh, spine and also starting to feel somewhat of the compressive forces uh, that we have in gravity so I just want to make sure that everything's okay there it's okay she gives me the head nod everything is good so uh, we're gonna have her lie down again and again uh, on this blanket to keep your uh, lower back a little straighter so we're going to uh, move into uh, the left side here so I'm going to just uh, do a little uh, stretching at first to see uh, what's going on. So I'm just going to bend here a little bit. So um, bringing the heel towards the gluteals to see if there's any movement at all in the lower back. Do you feel any tightness when I do that at all? No, not too much. Okay, good. And you can see that her heel comes pretty close here. Uh, this indicates tightness in the front of the leg, but since the, it pulls down on the spine, excuse me, on the, uh, on the hip, sometimes uh, it's painful for the person who has a really uh, deeper lower back pain. So that's good. So we're just going to do the same a general loosening then. So if you remember before, uh, we're going to address this particular area uh, with some palpation. Because when you come down to it, this is the strongest tool that we have is a sense of touch, right? So just going to work this feel for any tightness. 
And just to alleviate any second guessing, it's very good to have open communication with the person you're working on. You know, they're the experts in this scenario. You know, they can tell oh, where the tightness is, where you may not be able to feel it. Uh, they can tell you how much pressure is good for them if you cannot sense it. You know, all that hopefully, as far as the body worker goes, comes with experience, but uh, in the meantime, it's always good. You know, it's good for the relationship to have open communication. So, palpating here a little bit. And I'm loosening this area in a couple of different ways. Uh, I'm gonna stretch it open, create a little length. I'm gonna do what's called a cross stretch. So I'm gonna move this way and I'm gonna place one hand on the sacrum and the other hand on the other side of the spine. So I'm on either side of the spine, not on the spine. So you start re relatively close together and I'm gonna ask uh, Lucy to inhale. And on the exhale, I'm just gonna lean forward which brings my hands away from one another. So you can see in the fabric of her clothes She's getting a nice stretch there in the lower back. And you wanna just change the hand position, come up a little higher, which covers a little longer area, and it gets to stretch the longer muscles of the back, the, uh, some of the erectors. And then you can switch hands and stretch the other way. So this is not a muscle move. One of the things I love about this uh, type of integrative stretching is that it's all about body position. So I'm not muscling, but I'm rather placing my hands and then just leaning forward. Easy. You could do it all day. You might have to sometime. So it'll be good to know how to do it uh, correctly and, and efficiently. Okay. So general here and then I'm just going to come again into the hip. So um, we show different um, stretches of the hip, flat of the fist. One thing um, I like to show this time is the same move, but with our knee. So as we continue to loosen the hip after some uh, flat of the fist, some general loosening, I'm gonna try using my knee here and incorporate some of the movement that uh, is beneficial in uh, stretching and then uh, relaxing the muscle. So I'm just gonna come up here. Hey, Lucy, are you okay? Is your knee bugging you? My knee's bugging me, Oh, hang on one second. We're just going to uh, take this roll here and put it underneath her ankles because her knee was bothering a little bit. It was, tr it's better. It's tracking a little differently. So uh, then it, this is the way she feels uh, very supported. So we're coming back here and I was gonna about to use my knee, uh, but then as I put light pressure in here, I noticed that her uh, gluteals were twitching a little bit, so meaning that there is some significant tightness there. So I'm gonna uh, back up on my integrative knee work and do something else to uh, do a little bit more general loosening before I apply my knee, uh, just because of the way she was interacting. So again, I'm gonna use the bony landmark of the sacrum and I'm gonna come just to the outside of the sacrum so that I'm in the soft tissue of the gluteals. And I'm just gonna use my forearm and in this seated position, I'm just gonna simply lean in. So she gets some nice controlled compression from a wider, flatter surface. And I think uh, obviously it's a little easier for her to take. So that's one of the premises of integrative work that uh, we're not just doing a routine. Uh, we're doing things step by step and seeing how the person acts and reacts to what you're doing so that it allows us to um, try to do the most efficient thing uh, for the person, the most efficient technique for the person so that their body can accept uh, what you're offering. So it's just some nice here. And um, this is something that we do in Thai body work a lot where we introduce a nice uh, flat surface into the area and rather than lean in straight down, we bring towards the midline and roll our arms slightly so it creates some nice openness of the muscle away from the bony attachment. So I'm just gonna easily have a nice right angle here and just lean in 
And that way you can sustain the pressure a little bit easier too. That's okay, uh, Luz? Nice and easy. Because if you start to do something and their body is too reactive, it's almost, it's counterproductive uh, to continue on that course. You have to back up and see what's uh, the most efficient, more appropriate or applicable technique to do. So a little more loosening. So I'm gonna come up then and come and see if she can take a little bit of this knee pressure. Yep. It's okay. So it's a little easier. Now there's, I can feel even through uh, my knee, my patella, that there's the, it's a little softer on the surface. We had talked about a particular acupressure point in the gluteal and uh, in Chinese medicine it's uh, labeled gallbladder 30 which makes a reference to the line and uh, the, the number because there's a certain amount of acupressure points on every meridian. This is, happens to be the 30th one from where it starts on the front here on the face. And if you just feel for the top of the leg bone and the side of the sacrum, right in the center of that, there's, you're gonna feel a little, um, it feels like a speed bump, for lack of a different a visual. And you wanna go right in the belly of that, and that's the piriformis muscle. It really helps loosen up the hip. So once I find the point, I'm going to find a way to apply more efficient, consistent pressure. So I'm going to just come up on my knees a little bit and use my extended arms with a braced thumb so that I can just sink in a little bit. So it's more efficient, uh, but not harder necessarily. It's just that as a therapist, you're using your body a little cleaner and easier so that uh, Lucy can take the pressure a little bit more. It's okay. And then I would come out and repeat that a couple of times. One of the things that can flare up uh, the hip and the piriformis, and this is just uh, the reciprocal relationship between lower back and hip. You know, we started off talking about lower back pain and we noticed that uh, the hip was tight so that there something going on between the two to cause this imbalance. And it goes back and forth, so one of the things uh, that can be creating hip tightness is a muscle in the lower back, which is called the quadratus lumborum, uh, which comes from the ribs and attaches um, to the top of the hip. And when it contracts, it can pull the hip up and out of alignment. And this muscle is commonly referred to as the hip hiker. So without changing uh, your position as a therapist a lot, if you're working on the uh, floor like we are today, if you come just above uh, the hip and just below the rib, you can use your forearm just to sink in with your body weight a little bit and hold that pressure. So it's pressure into the muscle and slightly down to give it a little length. And you can just hold that for a little bit. It's pretty effortless because you're behind your work and you're just leaning in. And the only other factor you should consider is the comfort level of the person you're working on. So I'm just gonna check in with Lucy again. Um, how is that feeling, okay? Yeah. Not too much? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you'll feel heat, sometimes you'll feel the muscle jerking. Uh, sometimes uh, you'll feel just a slight softness under your touch. So I think the key here is just to uh, approach in a nice, um, compassionate way with good body mechanics and just hold the area a little bit until you feel something, some change. I'm gonna come out of that easy. And then we're just going to address uh, the hamstrings uh, once again. And one of the reasons I'm a, a doing the hamstrings is because these three muscles that constitute the uh, posterior compartment of the leg attached to the bottom of the sacrum, the ischial tuberosity, and when they uh, get tight they can pull 
the hip down. So I'm gonna just encourage a little uh, length here. And this time I'm gonna use my foot again so I can just do a little bit more sustained pressure. You know, you're working on someone and you, again, you have to make conscious choices all the time on what you're going to do to try to elicit some looseness in the person. So I had the opportunity to work on a lot of professional athletes and as you can imagine, uh, depending on uh, what sport they're participating in, they're muscled according to their function. Um, and I've been currently working on a lot of uh, football players and basketball players and they have very strong, very thick hamstrings. So even the foot pressure uh, isn't enough. So again, I share this with you in this integrative course to allow you to um, look at things with a little bigger perspective on what you can use to elicit some looseness in the person you're working on. What is the proper thing? What is the most efficient thing you can do? Because you want to have a sense of ease in your own work. When you're working on someone, you want to try to find that place of ease so that you can be more aware of what's happening and not have to be so concerned about doing harm to your own body by straining under the uh, pretense of helping someone else. That pressure's okay, Liz? So, easy. In Thai massage, uh, they call these blood stops, where you're in a stationary position, um, and what it does functionally is that it really helps engage the connective tissue, the fascia. Uh, with consistent pressure, it softens the fascia, and uh, the muscle can then uh, go back to its restored uh, length, so or fullness, really. And then you just would come up easy, no problem. Right. And then we'll just uh, end with a little stretch here. And now that we've done uh, both sides, I just want to check uh, one thing, and then I'm going to ask Lucy to come over, and we're going to do a little. Uh, a few more stretches both for a more loosening and assessment. So I'm going to bring both of her heels simultaneously to her hips just to see if one side pulls more than the other. And you tell me too, Lucy, if you feel one side more than the other. They about the same or? They're pretty close, yeah. And again, I know that she is uh, suffering some, but her ease here allows me to think that with some focused work and some particularly self-awareness as far as how she's sitting and using her body and some stretches that uh, she'll be just fine. Okay. So before we go into uh, the additional stretches, which is gonna be face up, I'm gonna ask you to push back into that um, Child's pose, please. And really focus on lengthening your arms and really stretching through here. So this nice sustained child's pose again to just really encourage some length uh, in the lower back. It also opens up the side of the torso. It's quite a lovely uh, pose. So then if coming out of that, uh, just slowly and try to stack your vertebrae uh, on the bottom and then uh, just like slowly, slowly, easy. And I'll just give her a minute or two while, um, and uh, it's uh, some of the techniques she's more responsive to than others. So this is why, again, why we have to uh, change in the course of things and not just get locked into one thing. So um, I'm going to do a few things now to uh, encourage a little bit more length in her lower back and to help open her hips. And these last series of techniques are inspired by what I've been feeling in the course of working with Lucy. So this, what, uh, how she reacts is helps dictate uh, what you as a therapist uh, can do to help accommodate the direction she's moving in naturally. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you then to uh, be face up, please with your head over here. And when you're changing um, 
the person you're working on from one position to the other, it's always good to give them a minute or so to sink in. Uh, because, you know, we, I'm asking her to turn over what she did. Uh, but, you know, it takes a minute for us to truly relax and let our body really feel the full support of the mat. And sometimes our body will shift and you might even feel a little something. And because of uh, the area we've been working on lower back, um, one thing is that sometimes just lying flat like this can exasperate lower back pain, even in supine. So um, I, depending on how she's feeling right now, if, how does that feel? Is okay or okay? And she does feel fine. And uh, but if not, uh, what is good is to put something underneath the person's knees. So when you lift the knees, it naturally flattens the lower back so that uh, it can. Uh, fully receive the support of the floor or the mat but in this case the end so uh, we're gonna do a few things uh, to help open up the lower back and then uh, the hips and then we'll do a, a little assessment uh, stretching like we started in the first part so here we get to work a little bit away from the lower back so I'm going to use her legs as uh, extensions to create a little length so I'm just going to come down uh, to her feet and I'm grabbing a hold of her heels and then just leaning back with my body weight so she gets a nice little stretch into her lower back and again I'm just leaning back so I'm not pulling you can see my arms are extended and relatively relaxed okay you felt that a little bit in your lower back and then we're gonna move up uh, to stretch uh, the hamstrings and then the lower back. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna bring her legs uh, into about right angles to the mat. I'm just gonna move your arm that away. And you see she has a little slight bend in her knees. So those hamstrings still a little tight so I'm just going to push her knees back a little bit. You can see her body quivering against uh, the resistance of the muscle being uh, lengthened. So that means that, again, I have to back off just a little bit to accommodate where uh, she is at, not where I think she should be. So uh, one thing while you're laying there, just to encourage some nice length through your entire spine, can you tuck your chin just a little bit so that you get some nice length through your posterior cervical things. So, I'm just going to come here so now I'm just going to bend her knees just let your eyes close it's okay take a few breaths and I'm going to bring her knees towards her torso so that it lengthens you can see as I move the pelvis forward it pulls this structure so it'll lengthen the lower back so it's simple and I'm using my body weight in a way where I can accommodate different body sizes so I have a wide stance and my arms are extended so that I can just lean forward. You feel that in your lower back? So this is a nice sustained stretch for lower back, but it also gives you opportunity to call attention to the person saying, you know, you could do this yourself. And this is a nice uh, self-help stretch for stretching out the lower back, quite all lovely. And you can hold it for a little bit and you still feel, um, the stretch, yes. Very nice. You know, it's all about asking for uh, some assistance and help, receiving it, and then taking the responsibility onto yourself and doing uh, some of these uh, self-care things at home. It really helps enhance the work you receive uh, from body workers or from uh, friends and family. So, I'm just gonna come out of that. Now you can let go. Let your arms come down and I'm just going to add just a little motion here just to really help now loosen the hips up a little bit one way and then the other and then I'm going to come in this position so her legs here are pretty much straight up and down and I'm supporting them with my legs on either side so I don't really need to have my hands in place for that function so they're freed up to place the palms of their hands right on her knees. And I'm just gonna lean down a little bit. 
and she should feel that in her sacrum and her hips. This really helps open up uh, the hip joints. So I mentioned earlier that there's a triangle bone, the sacrum, at the base of the spine. But on either side of the sacrum are the hip bones. And where they connect uh, is the sacroiliac joint. And this helps, by pressing down, open up and it helps uh, relieve some of the tension that uh, is compounded by the compression up and the pull from below. So I'm just going to lean in a little bit more. out of that. That's okay. Sneezing is part of the healing. <laughs> you can sneeze yourself to help. So nice rocking a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to move into a seated position so that we can uh, take a look at um, if we've had any positive effects on Lucy through the work so we can continue with our assessment. So I'm just going to bring her up into a seated position and then just ask her to just to take a few breaths and sit up straight because I want to see how her weight is going through the vertebral column a little bit. Your lower back feels okay. Mm -hmm. And also part of our assessment was to see how the knees were acclimating to the surface of the mat, so that gives an, an indication of the tightness or the looseness of the hamstrings. Now this side uh, seems a little better actually, but uh, how is this side's up high a little bit yeah, still? I'm having a bit of pain right here on the back. Then when you say right here, where exactly? Right, right there. Okay, so, okay. So I'm just gonna bend the leg here a little bit and just bring her here. So. This is a hamstring, and there's three hamstrings, and this one is the biceps of femoris or femoris, and it attaches right at the back of the knee, and it's so ropey, it feels like a number two pencil, almost. It's got that continuity to it. So we're gonna do a little something to help stretch the hamstring out a little bit before we uh, proceed. So um, Lucy, if you don't mind, would you just lie down again, please? So we're going to just do a straight leg test to see uh, how the, her hamstrings are. So nice and easy. And I'm going to shift my foot over here so I could use it as support. And because it is so tight, I'm going to do it in graduations, right? I um, try to work with little expectation, really. I don't think that if I do something, this is uh, automatically going to happen. It keeps me a little bit more present and helps me regulate the work. So I'm just going to do a nice, easy stretch, first of all. Now, uh, when you look in a lot of uh, the anatomical books or uh, having had the opportunity to work with a lot of physical therapists, you know, there are certain ranges of motion that are, ex uh, are normal or healthy range of motions. So for the hamstrings, particularly when uh, the person, uh, Lucy, is in supine and you start raising the leg, the leg should come somewhere within the range of 80, 90 degrees to the mat, meaning st uh, straight up and down. So I'm just going to start taking it until uh, she feels resistance. And if you can see how the hip reacts, like I lift up, there, the hip starts gripping and a grimace on her lovely face. So it's all connected. Right, so we want to try to encourage a little length because uh, there's stress in the system. That's one of the reasons we have these expressions is there's stress in the fascial system pulling, initiating some emotional response. So we're just going to come up a little bit and see right there, that's where she's feeling it the most. So there's no need to do anything further. But what you can do to help facilitate uh, is this. And, and Lucy, just keep your lower back on the ground and I'm going to have you keep your legs straight and with your heel I want you to press down into my palm to a count of five, four, three, two, one and release. And look, a little bit more range of motion. So we do again. So five, four, three, press, two, one, release. A little bit more range of motion. Okay. Is it too much? 
but we have a, but increased range of motion. So the pain hasn't escalated, but the range of motion has increased. Uh, so we'll do one more. So I want you to keep, really keep your focus on keeping your sacrum on the mat and pressing with your heel as much as you can. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Oh, lovely. So we've picked up some degrees, and also I think we've also impressed on Lucy with this uh, particular stretch that you know her uh, getting better is within her grasp for sure for sure so I'm just gonna release that okay so hopefully that'll help accommodate the uh, stretches and uh, self stretching too for hamstrings uh, unassisted uh, you can put your legs up against the wall you know so that you move yourself as close as you can to the wall when you're face up and put your legs up against the wall uh, so that you can have some sustained stretch and then gradually uh, if your body and spirit are so inclined you can move a little closer and closer and get a nice full range of motion over your um, hamstrings so that's lovely and it's good here in this course here of uh, the integrated work that we have the time to deal with real problems uh, real imbalances as they're happening so we can see if we're on the right track it's to see if this integrative approach is the thing to do in this case and also to including movement um, so that we can move towards a little sense of self-care and more of a balanced lifestyle. And I'd like to end with just this one final stretch for the hip because as we mentioned earlier, you know, the tight hip can add or exasperate uh, not only uh, the lower back above but also the hamstrings below. So we we'll just end with a nice hip stretch here. So. I'm just going to do a few accommodating things before we do the deeper stretch. And the accommodating thing is this. So we're going to start in graduations. First with the foot down and then just a simple cross to stretch the hip. You can see where it's stretching. That's okay. So that's the first position. And the second position I'm going to move it up and bring the foot across her leg. And then bring her leg across. So it's a little bit more. Still okay. Awesome. And I'm gonna do the other side. So the leg first, foot on the ground, a little adjustment there, always nice. Okay, and then the knee up towards her chest and her foot across. Stretch okay? That feels nice, that one, huh? So uh, her body is taking to that stretch a little bit more. So how to react as an integrative body worker is, oh, we'll just do it a little longer and more sustained. So I'm just gonna change my body position so I can do it this way. So my foot is right behind her knee and I'm just having her stretch this way and holding it a little bit more. Okay, and then we're just gonna come back. So now we both feel good about her getting her hips nice and loose. And then we're gonna go into this final hip stretch. So knees up and then out, and then you need to step through. And my hips are uh, above, my, excuse me, my feet are above her hips. And I'm gonna bring her legs around and this starts to open up her hips. And here she has some nice accommodation where the soles of her feet are coming together. Okay, and so the stretch is this, that I'm gonna be motioning her feet down towards her chest, to her sternum. And I'm also gonna apply a little back pressure with my legs so that it, you can see here how it's gonna open up those hips. So I'm gonna have you inhale, and on the exhale, feel. Too much? How's that? You feeling your hips pretty good? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I'm just gonna come out nice and slow. Stepping 
backwards. Okay. Okay, and then give me your hands, please, and come to a seated position. And then if you want to come up to a standing position. Okay, so moving uh, from uh, supine to standing, I had Lucy stand up here. Uh, so that, uh, again, she can start to feel uh, if there's been any change to the integrative work we've done. So, uh, first of all, Lucy, can you uh, just uh, just walk in place a little bit, because that helps uh, bring your weight more into a balanced situation. And just come to a standstill. And how does your back feel, or in general, how do you uh, feel now? It's a little looser. All right. Uh, yeah, they're uh, very effective and uh, again, uh, the overall, you have tightness, but your overall condition of your tissue is really good. So it responds well and uh, when it did respond uh, too much, I was able to adjust the pressure and then you really started to uh, release a little bit. And one thing I'd like you to focus on though is along with the back stretch is really uh, thinking about that hamstring stretch. Okay, so uh, that would be a good uh, thing though for you to uh, work with at home. And we talked about a couple of different things you can do. So I'd really highly uh, recommend that. Uh, so, okay, great. And just to end, um, and this is, brings it full circle as far as our assessment goes, if you could uh, bend forward uh, at the waist and let your head go a little easier and let your arms come down, let your knees be just a little soft. Okay. And uh, she is a lot closer, somewhat closer to the ground. She's actually touching the ground now. But I could also see a full disclosure that uh, there is still this tightness uh, in the hamstring because her knee is bending a little bit more to accommodate that. So easy up. So overall, we created some uh, ease of pain and looseness and lengthening in the lower back and hips. But the hamstring uh, is still a little wonky a word I heard today. So in the next sessions, uh, you know, you can receive more concentrated work, but also again, those self-help uh, stretches for hamstrings, sustained stretch will really help you. I want to thank you for joining me and watching these previous two videos on integrative body work. And in working um, to help alleviate some of lower back stress and mild pain and hip discomfort and shortness in the hamstrings with Lucy, um, we decided to make a separate video, and this will be the next video in the series that we're presenting here. And it's a series of self-help uh, stretches that you can easily do at home or in your workplace if you have the space uh, to help keep looseness, to help uh, to really foster some sense of posture. And you know, a lot of this our discomfort comes from how our body is reacting to our situation, our stress, our environment. So the stretches help uh, lengthen and strengthen uh, the problem areas so that we can have a better sense of postural integrity. So I hope you join me uh, for this uh, next video in self-help uh, stretches uh, for lower back, hip, and hamstring. Thank you. And remember, you can find this full course of integrative body work by going to wellnessplus.tv or you can watch for free if you have Amazon Prime. And if you'd like to get more specific information about the type of work I do, uh, Shoshin Shiatsu Integrative Body Work, you can go to my website, which is blackswanproductions.com. Thanks again. Hey patrons, it's Karina and Missy. Hey patrons, this is Jess. Hey mom. It is Greek Goddess Hour continued. And we are here with an exciting update for you. It's going to be more interactive, more communication, more connection, so that we can offer you more of what you want to see. It's like the most frustrating thing. You're like, God, this video is going so great. And then the camera dies.
All right, patrons, so I just want to show you all the perspective here. All right, let's do your city. You're choosing us over Netflix, or right. I wouldn't even choose us over Netflix. No, that's not true. I'm feeling pretty good. And what we want to do is become more connected with you. So thank you so so much.